In this tutorial describes how to model and simulate an end-to-end -end radar system using phased array system toolbox. As an example, we will build a complete monostatic radar system with a single element for the radiating antenna and multiple elements for the collecting antenna. We will then model and track multiple targets. Let's start with a set of design specifications for our system. For example, range resolution, probability of detection and the probability of false alarm. For simplicity, we adopt a non-coherent detection scheme and assume a free space environment. At a high level, a radar system model is comprised of the following components. A waveform generator, a transmitter, transmit and receive arrays, an environment including propagation, target and interference models, a receiver front end, and array signal processing algorithms such as beamformers and direction of arrival estimators. Using this block diagram as a reference, we'll look at the complete MATLAB code for this model. We'll show you how to easily model each component of the radar system and then how to simulate the system. The first component in the diagram is the waveform generator. This is the MATLAB code for the waveform generation portion of the example. You can design your waveform based on your specific environment, target and requirement such as range resolution and propagation speed. Once you have all the parameters, you can easily construct a waveform object. The waveform generator and other components are represented as system objects, which are MATLAB objects designed specifically for simulating dynamic systems with inputs that change over time. To create the waveform generator, you can use tab completion to see the list of available objects and algorithms. For this example, we are going to choose a rectangular waveform. You can also create other waveforms provided by the toolbox such as LFM and stepped FM, staggered PRFs and face-coded waveforms. You can also view information on this object in the help window and see the list of properties that you can set. For example, you can set the sample rate, pulse width and pulse repetition frequency for a rectangular waveform. Next, let's look at the transmitter and receiver. This is the code for constructing the transmitter and receiver. You can easily create these components with your own configurations. The transmitter allows you to specify parameters such as gain, peak power and loss factor. You can use the radar equation provided in the toolbox to calculate the peak power for the transmitter. You can simulate the receiver front end by specifying receiver noise and other receiver characteristics. The next components are the radiating and collecting antennas. This is the code for the antennas. We are modeling a monostatic radar and the radiating and collecting antennas are co-located. The pulse radiation is modeled through an antenna element or an array. You can specify the radiation direction for the array as a whole or for each element separately. In this particular example, there is one transmit element, isotropic, and a receive antenna array with six elements in uniform linear shape. The antenna platform is stationary in this case. As you can see, the velocity is set to zero. This is how you construct the transmit array, receiver array, transmitter and receiver. Next, let's take a look at environment, targets and interference. This is the code for creating targets. In this example, we create three different targets at different ranges and speeds. We use the free space environment model for all the targets. The free space environment models in the toolbox simulate one-way or two-way propagation delays. Now with all the components created, you can put them together and simulate the whole system. As you've just seen, creating each of these components is fairly simple. The simulation is usually done in a loop of pulse intervals. In the loop, for each pulse, we first update the antenna position and target position, generate and transmit the pulse, radiate the pulse towards the target, the pulse propagates through the medium and reflects off the target, and finally, we collect the echoes and formulate the data cube. How do you execute these components at each time step? For this, we simply call the step function for the objects created for each component in the order along the signal propagation path. These steps are repeated for the number of pulse intervals, so the step functions are called inside the loop. After simulating the system model, the result is this data cube that we now process using radar signal processing. The code for signal processing in this example is beyond the scope of this tutorial, but let's briefly look at the steps involved. You may or may not need to perform all these steps for your system, 
but this is typically what you do if you have an antenna array. First you perform beam forming, then match filtering to improve signal to noise ratio, followed by range normalization such as in this case where you have multiple targets in different ranges, and then pulse integration to further improve the signal to noise ratio. Finally, you detect target range and estimate Doppler. The signal processing code for these steps is shown here. We are now ready to run the simulation. In a simulation, beam formers are used to steer the reception towards each target. From the resulting three figures, we can see that after the beam former, the corresponding target can be detected at the correct range using the preset threshold. We just simulated an end-to-end -end radar system with an antenna array, detected the targets, and verified whether the detected direction of arrival or Doppler is as expected. In this video, we have seen how you can use Phase Array System Toolbox to design and simulate a monostatic pulse radar system that estimates target range.